It's Liliana the Magnificent, and welcome back to my main city, Dukes of Honey. So in this video, I'm going to go over some of the basics of starting a new city in Forge of Empires. I'm pretty excited because I've been wanting to do a basics video for quite some time, um, so I thought it was only appropriate that I create a new world to demo this. So um, this is currently B World. This has been the only world that I've ever been active in, and I've been playing for over three years. So I am starting off as a newbie in Age World, and this little baby is only 48 hours old and also in Bronze Age. So I've noticed that since I was a newbie over three uh, years ago, Forge of Empires has put on more restrictions on newbies. They've changed some things, and absolutely I understand that because, um, oh, oh boy, we zoomed out. <laughs> Wrong direction there, guys. Um, they've added a lot since that time. So, like, uh, they've added the different cultural settlements. They've added the GBG. They've added the antique dealer lots of new things. So I get that they don't want to have all of those things accessible to newbies right away and they want to slowly introduce them. So um, I get that as a seasoned player. <laughs> There's also a little bit of frustration in that too. But anyway, so let's go over some of the basics. So the very first thing, when you create your new city, um, something that you absolutely want to do is create a profile picture, or not create, but choose, I guess, a profile picture of one that you want to be your avatar. So I kept my same one because this is me. To be honest, even with events, I don't switch avatars. I have kept this same avatar for over three years. I never have switched a different one. So this is just me. Um, I created my second city to have a different name. So we've got the Bow Battens, obviously Harry Potter themed. i super into Harry Potter. Um, then also don't forget to create a little description. So this is on computer. You can actually see this right above people's names. So as you can see, if you haven't done anything, it says you can customize your profile text here. Um, on phone, you don't see them above the names, but where you see them is when you actually visit the city, it'll pop up in this little kind of up hand, left hand corner there, and it'll have the description that you put on your profile here. But it's really nice. You can tell people uh, if you want them to motivate or polish. Um, I kind of gave a little like, hey, I've been playing in the different worlds because I'm not just a newbie, but that's okay. <laughs> then also, you can uh, tailor some of your achievements here as well. And these do pop up on mobile right above people's names too. So you'll see these three. But if we go in here, I always like to do a friendship one. Um, but I don't have a lot of others that are open to me here like I do in my other profile because I'm new. I don't have a lot of achievements. But I do have the friendship because that is me. I always like to be friendly. Okay, so let's go on from there. Do, 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 do. I'm looking at my notes, you guys. Okay, so next is your town hall. To get familiar in your town hall, it's going to come up with your boost overview. So obviously my town is really, really new and this has no boost. But uh, if you get different buildings, different great buildings, different specialty buildings, even uh, boosts from your tavern will come up here. Then you have access to your profile here too. The emissaries, this specifically has to do with that cultural settlement piece, which is actually, if you just look a little bit up right above it, you'll see that little bridge, or not a bridge, a little platform. Um, that is where you would access the cultural settlements. Um, but this is locked, so you have to do some stuff in the research tree in order to unlock that. Uh, then... From there, um, and this also looks a little bit different on mobile, like this feature doesn't come up on mobile, but it does on here. On mobile, it just automatically shows you your event history, and it uh, they don't tailor it so nicely here as they do on mobile, but on mobile you have options of, oh, I'm trying to think, you can look at 
um, social interactions with, which actually they aren't coming up here and I'm not quite sure why. Um, normally they do, but maybe that's a feature that has to be unlocked still. I'm not sure, but normally you, I could search right here. So I don't know why I can't, but you can see social interactions. You can look at guild interactions, great building events, um, and maybe military events. I can't remember. I'm just going off the top of my head. Um, but let's see from there. We're going to go over to our friendship tavern. So this unlocks in your tech tree pretty early, but absolutely, if you're a newbie, start upgrading your tavern right away. So the first thing I did, normally you start with three. The first thing I did was I upgraded my table to, our, or no, you start with four. Nope, three. You start with three. Oh man, see, I've already been 48 hours in. I've already forgotten. Yes. Three, because you can upgrade your table and then these open and then you have to donate more of your tavern silver that you collect to open these up. So like you can see my next chair to unlock I think is 800. Yeah, 800 tavern. So definitely open those so people can start visiting you um, and you can start upgrading. So for me, the direction I'm going to go is opening up chairs, then getting a tray in the middle because these trays actually give you more tavern silver. But the other thing is, is you want to be really mindful about your friends that are visiting your tavern. So I will automatically also start to um, try to upgrade the tablecloth because that actually gives those that visit my tavern chances of getting forge points and you want them to be able to keep visiting you instead of defriending you. So absolutely start there. Uh, next thing is actually aiding people. So it looks a little bit di different on computer versus on uh, mobile. But on mobile, there'll be a little star button. <laughs> if you see I'm trying to create a little star, there'll be a star button at the top of all of these. On computer, it's on the bottom, and it'll say aid. And if I pop over to this neighborhood, there might be, yeah, okay, so in this neighborhood, they add all these newbies in, so you can see the aid button here, but then on computer, it's a star. Absolutely aid your friends list, so that's always going to be this one. The middle one is your guild. The guild does not, the guild feature you have to unlock within Bronze Age, and then you've got your personal friends, so absolutely aid. I try to aid my friends and even my neighbors once a day, but especially my friends I try to aid as often as I can because you want them to keep visiting you. Then within your friends, option two, at least on computer, you have this little chair option and that's to visit their taverns. On mobile, the chair option is right here and you would press that. Um, so visit taverns and visit aid or um, aid your friends list as often as you can. When you first start off in your neighborhood, there is no uh, plunder or attack feature that actually opens up within the tech tree as well. So the only option you can do initially is aid. Um, you can also um, ask people to be your friend as well. I know how to do it on <laughs> mobile, but for some odd reason, it just eludes me. On computer, I'm gonna be completely honest. I have no idea why I can't figure out. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Normally, there's a nice little plus mark when you tap this person on mobile. You can see, but I, you press the name here and then you go all the way down to add as a friend. So you can do that. I'm gonna actually have a separate video about how to choose friends. Um, that'll be linked. I'll link that here. Uh, next. Uh, almost done. Okay, so let's go to a marketplace real quick. Oops, wrong, wrong. There we go. Okay, so granted, you also have to unlock goods buildings um, in the tech tree as well. Essentially, you'll just you'll hear me repeat a lot. You have a lot. You have a lot to uh, unlock. But here we go. So let's create an offer real quick, just because of the next feature that I want to do. So as you can see, this skill or this uh, goods marketplace. I don't have a lot in my inventory. I've got five marble and I've got four die. I'm not going to actually keep this trade around because it's so tiny, but I 
I want to create a trade so that you guys can actually see this. Let's do, let's do a very simple, just one. I hope nobody picks this up because that would just make me feel terrible. But so we're going to just create a small little one just so I can give an example. But you can create uh, different good trades here that you can. Uh, this will go straight to either your guild if you are in a guild or they'll go to the neighborhood and your friends list too. But I hope nobody picks that up because I just want to be able to show you guys. Um, so we're going to talk about creating messages. This is huge and I've learned that um, a lot of new players have uh, some difficulty with this. Once again, it looks a little bit different on mobile, but not too much. So to create a message, you go to the create a message, which is always to the right tab of the message overview. On mobile, you will have a drop down menu here and you can select neighbors, guilds, friends, or other. That is not the same on the feature on the computer, but I know he won't mind me choosing him as an example. Um, he's actually why I created a world in H. So anyway, you can create a message here, blah, 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 and send it off. There's also the option, and this is really helpful in standard swap threat, standard swap threads, but also um, a lot of guilds will have a trading thread so you can post. Like for instance, I can link my great building here. So you would click this. I don't want to actually send it to him because I don't want him to know what to do with this, but you can click send or link and it'll put that or you can link a trade offer. So that is a really nice feature. Then also with the create a thread, there's also the option to leave threads. So I'm not going to actually leave this thread, but when you're in a thread, you can go to that three bar up above and then there's a leave. So if anybody asks you to leave a thread, that's also what you can do. Okay, that's goods. Um, okay, so another thing, when you're first starting out your city, this tavern is going to kind of be in the middle of the town and then they're going to have all these weird sectiony off roads and it's just a mess. So be really mindful. You can move this tavern anywhere you want in your city. So yes, it's in the middle. I always try to move my tavern to a corner just because then I can build off of it. Obviously, I'm so created. I created the same exact roads that I do in my main B world, but that's fine because it's always worked well. But once again, be really strategic about setting up buildings that match each other in the same rows. So these are all threes. These are twos. You do not have to have a road on each one. They can, as long as it's connected by one, you can go. So you don't need to have two roads connected. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. So like I have two rows of houses before I have a second road. You don't need to have one row of houses and then a road. So be mindful of that. Um, as well. Then also try to really balance the houses that you have with the, I have my attack buildings up here or my army up there. I've got my goods started and I have also my supplies. So I have a little bit of everything. If we peek here, I only have 13 population right now left. So that is the population that you want to try to keep minimal. So don't have an exorbitant amount of population. Really try to balance that with everything else in your city. So I've got the population. Then I have my supplies going. I did, um, when I first started, I did use some of their big supply buildings, um, but they're just so big. And the minute that the blacksmith became available, I mean, I tell you, even as a modern age era in B World, this blacksmith is like the bee's knees, especially during events. But once blacksmith became available, I deleted those big, um, I did keep one, but uh, I tried to delete all the big supply buildings and replaced with those. Also, continually, continually upgrade your population buildings. So this is the third population building that became available. This is the chalet, or the shallot, I don't know what you want to say. Don't butcher me, guys. <laughs> but uh, the first one that was available was the hut. Once the hut 
or, or once the thatched house became available, I put all thatched houses, then the stilt house became available, I replaced all those, and then I replaced with this. So absolutely keep upgrading. Do not stop. The more you upgrade, the faster you can start to build everything. Then also keep a nice balance with your happiness. So uh, happiness allows your supply buildings to um, crank out more supplies. So granted, if we pop in here, um, you can just see that you can get more supplies out of your buildings if your people are happy. So uh, make sure they're happy too. So keep that nice balance. Uh, last thing. Let's see, I do have one of each army that I do have available and unlocked. So keep one of each army building. There's really no need for you, at least at the initial stage, to have like multiple spear fighters, multiple horsemen. Right now I've been doing fine with just one of each. Um, okay, let's see. Incidences don't, I've learned, don't pop up until 24 hours after you have been in the game. So incidents, let's see if I can find any around. They kind of glow and they have little rewards in them, but they do not pop up right away. Uh, they, you get a little notification when they do, but it's about 24 hours and I don't even have any of my in my city right now to even show you what those look like. But they might be like little wheelbarrows, uh, maybe little boats, maybe a little SOS in the sand, things like that. Um, so those will come available. And the last thing before I go into the research tech tree is they do pretty much force you to build this great building. They give you the 20 forge points to actually get it out of the sticks. So if we pop back to level or this level, you can see they gave me the 20 forge points in order to build this. And they also, it's part of the storyline. So they do force you into this. Um, the Daily challenges are not available yet to me. I have to unlock those. I'll show you those in the research tech tree. But I do want to point out, you can, I did work through some of the side quests, but then they wanted me to start unlocking, you know, unlock this within the research tree, unlock this within the research tree. And I was like, oh my goodness. Well, what if I just keep going? Because normally I get to these recurring quests and I do have a CF cycling video. Uh, granted, I don't have a CF, but you can still cycle. So I'll link that here. But I don't have two options, but I do have one, and they do have a recurring quest. So I've already started two, and it's very exciting to me because, oh my gosh, you guys, waiting for forge points, I've forgotten how painful it is, but I wait, and it is just, oh, it's painful. But anyway, let's go into my inventory. I've got one cute little coin boost that I got from an incident, but look, I already have some forge point packets. I am so excited. And those are from the recurring quests that I've done. So I haven't used them yet because I'm waiting for our great buildings to be unlocked for me because, oh my gosh, it's just so fun. If I were to go and visit, like, let's go visit somebody in my guild. It's very annoying. And this is probably just because it's me. But so here, you can look at all of their great buildings, but guess what? You can't actually view any, oh, see, it doesn't let you research the art, the agriculture, the architecture first. So yeah, you can look at people's great buildings, but you can't donate or do anything to them, which just drives me insane. So I'm actually, I would sit probably in Bronze Age for a little bit, but because I can't even touch people's great buildings, I am just flying as fast as I can through this darn research tree. Oh, it's so frustrating. But anyway, so... <laughs> Here, when you first start off, this is the only thing that they do in Stone Age. They bring you right into Bronze Age. So like I said, this is after 48 hours of playing. I have not um, I have not used my three Forge Point packets. Those are my only Forge Point packets, and I'm keeping them. I could use them, but I'm not going to waste them. There were two quests so far that have forced me to buy a Forge Point Um don't, I, I tend, like, I have another video, but I tend not to use these. Uh, well, it's absolutely a waste to use those. Don't waste your diamonds on those. Um, use them on, with coins. So I've had two that they forced me to buy a forge point, but don't waste your points and just buy a bunch because you're going to want those for special events. But as you can see, um, they limit you. So initially you get the content map open. So oh, I should show you guys the content map real quick. So the content map 
is where you actually learn uh, what you're boosted in. So the first couple things, you do get a, an expansion. You get opened to this um, Bronze Age tournament tower, but you can't even attack your uh, neighborhood. So I don't even know why they have that there. It's kind of counterproductive in my opinion, but whatever. Uh, cause PVPs don't open yet. I'll show you that on the treaty search tree, but you can see that I am boosted in lumber and I'm also boosted in, uh, wine. So in my city, those are the two goods that I have going. I've got wine and I've got lumber. Do not build any other goods buildings that you are not boosted in. So you get 10 when you are boosted. If you are not boosted in a good, you get only two in an eight hour time period or one in a four. Do not do that. Trade those out. Trade what you got for the things that you're not boosted in. Um, but absolutely get into that content map, continent map, and see what you're boosted in and get those into your city as fast as you can. But it took me some time. I actually didn't get goods till today. Um, but anyway, I'll kind of go into that. So the next feature um, that it unlocks is special events. So you can't do special events right away, and those would be things like the Christmas event or the upcoming, I think we're having a St. Patrick's Day event coming, which I'm like super excited about. But anyway, then you have all of these, and then you can finally do guilds. So let me tell you guys, you cannot join a guild right away. The another, other annoying thing is, is you can't even, until you unlock this, they don't even allow you to look at guild descriptions. Like, all of that is completely blacked out. So, absolutely ridiculous, but whatever. Because, you know, guilds are what help people learn, so why would we have newbies not allowed to do that? I don't know. But even so, even though I'm in a guild right now, I still can't do GE. So Guild Expedition, I am locked out of. GBG, um, so they do allow you to do GVG, which I think is interesting, but GBG does not unlock until almost the end of Iron Age. So, <sighs> silly. But anyway, back to the research tree real quick. So you can see, I still have these and these to go. So that's at least like another day or two for me before I can get to Iron Age. <laughs> And you guys, oh, here it is. This is just, this just drives me insane. Can I, can I get in here? Why won't it let me? Oh, there we go. Absolutely drives me insane. You cannot look at contributions in great buildings until you hit Iron Age. So you have to go through the entire Bronze Age before you can even look at other people's great buildings. But so that's one feature that I found to be very just kind of painful to wait for. Daily challenges you finally unlock in the Iron Age. But then look, we go all the way over here. Not till kind of the middle of Iron Age is when you can do PvP fights. And that's when you fight your neighbors in your hood. Which granted, I don't fight people and I don't plunder. But still, that's a really long time to unlock. The reconstruction mode doesn't unlock till then. And also cultural settlements don't unlock till then. But, oh, and I forgot to show up. Uh, where is it? It doesn't unlock till later, but why can't I find it? I believe it doesn't show on here, but on my phone, this PvP, Military Tactics, is also when GBG opens. So, I mean, they really limit you, and I get it. I, and I, I absolutely get it. For an, a newbie, yeah, they need to understand some of those features before, but as somebody who's a seasoned player, this is just painful. Um, so I'm kind of sitting here and waiting, but yes, let me peek on my notes. Those are the limitations that I've noticed if you're starting a new building or a new city. I think that's everything though. Okay, you guys, I hope this was helpful in starting a new city and there's just some basics and also some of my rants too, but I'm excited to have this new city here. Um, let me know down below if you have any questions or anything like that. All right, bye guys. Happy forging.